Hello, Froggy here, and today we'll be getting to that strange blob you see in the upper right. I teased it at the end of my last video, but we did in fact manage to get out there. And boy is it something. I am so looking forward to uh, when we eventually go there. So to do this, you're going to need at least two guardians, though I would recommend having three. I'll be going over a bit of the route that I've already shown in my previous video for your convenience. If you are already familiar with the route, you can go ahead and skip ahead using the handy chapters below. The first thing you'll want to do is die around here. Everyone who isn't sink boxing out or using any other sort of box break will be IRBing in. This spot just happens to be very convenient for that. And now we just have to do the regular route to get to the launch tubes. We want to be careful to not dive. My part 2 video shows you how you could do this on a warlock. Although Unless you plan to use sync box to do the second box break, I would recommend being on a titan. The strange stripey mountains are all solid, so as soon as you get above the kill barrier, you can walk across them safely. For the most part, the lasers won't bother you down here, but sometimes they do, so keep an eye out. We're just going to go around these rocks and to the left. This is definitely the trickiest bit on a warlock, though on a titan with sword flying, everything is pretty much the same. just have to break back inside the entrance and Bach showed a very handy way to do that. Just gotta go in the side there and swing up the mesh. And there we go. As soon as we hit the load zone here, we can summon sparrows. It can be a little bit hard to notice though with all the name masking going on. Sarah facility entrance is a pretty small zone. We almost immediately hit the next one. The launch center, also known as geosynchronous orbit. And we're at the tubes. Just swapping over to my stasis climbing gear. Ah, third try is the charm. Just gotta jump on the middle ledges and now we climb. You can actually make this climb go a little bit faster if you use your sparrow. I'm not quite good enough to Sparrow fly up the tube itself, but that did cut out a few nades. And now it's time to break the box. In part one, I showed how to sink box out of here. This time, Salvo is going to be using balance box. I'll link a guide to that below. For balance box, the observer should have low frames, and the balancer should have high frames. Salvo is currently balanced at a steep angle, but he's desynced and driving around on my screen. At this point, he just needs to get on and off the sparrow with the right timing so that it resyncs with him on the other side. And there we go. Balance box is a lot more convenient here. Although the glitch is a little bit pay to win, as the higher your frame rate is, the easier it will be for you to perform the glitch. Ideally, you'd want 
I don't know, 200 plus frames per second. Anyways, time to go join Salvo out there. Oh, but before I do, let's get those frames back up a bit. Since we've already got one person out of the box, we can have the other one or two people join via IRB using the death that we set earlier. Just going to get back out the way we came in and hit the load from behind to die. It can be a little bit tricky to hit the load correctly sometimes, but luckily it is very easy to retry. Just going to make my way over there. It is right inside by the boxes on the left. I just want to walk in there and straight into the load. Sometimes it'll teleport you up, but hopefully it won't. And there we go. Once we've been rezzed, we just need to head over to above security sector. I'll just give you the highlights here. If you want the full flight, you can look back at part two. To get to my preferred exit from the inside of the station, we first need to go over a small invisible wall. Next, we can go out this hole in the right side and make our way up to the catch. I like using the catch as a little marker of uh, where I like to drop back into the box. I've got my sword at the ready to heavy swing to kill the momentum after I am low enough. And now it's just a simple stroll over to security sector. I would recommend having already been on Thunder Crash for a while because you're going to need it for the next step. There's a good chance we'll die to the load, so we want to do a hub IRB. Just die here, and then go ahead and thunder crash to hit the load. To do that, jump down here and line yourself up carefully. Because if you miss, it's going to be another six and a half minutes. I missed there, but I managed to hit it on the way back. Once Salvo appears on my screen, they'll be able to res me and I'll be in security sector. Hitting that load is a pain and only doable on Titan, so anyone else can just use the door ghost breach sort of thing that I showed in part two. Salvo prefers using sticky nades, although fusion nades are a bit faster. If you're planning to use balance box, you only need two people for this part. The sync box method would require all three. Since we're going to be using balance box here, Gerb Snail is over waiting where we did the first IRB, which will be necessary for the final part. But let's not get ahead of ourselves just yet. Over to the right here is where we'll be breaching the box the second time. A vanilla sink box won't actually work here because in security sector, the box extends all the way to the true floor. There's nothing to drop beneath. Don't mind that. That's just the sound of the game angrily informing me that I should have already teleported somewhere else. 
Salva will be sinkboxing to that far corner. Once again, I'm going to lower my frame rate to make it easier to desync the sparrow. And I'm also going to fly up to an invisible platform up here. That way I'll be able to see if Salvo has line of sight. And here we go. Salvo is desynced on my screen and making his way over to the corner. There is a little lip here that will block line of sight, so he's keeping to the left so that eventually the sparrow will be knocked on top of it. And there we go. And it is sinking time. It's much easier to get the sink working if you're zoomed in on Aachen. Or some other high zoom sniper. And he's out. It is possible to use sink box for this, but instead of using explosive rounds to knock the sparrow off, you'll have to use two warlocks with Vesper of Radius to launch it. Naturally, you'll need to desync both of them first, but if they use their rifts at the same time, the sparrow will go flying. Then you just need to do the normal sinking step. Note that the observing warlock must be synced with the other launcher. So now, Salvo is out of the box in security. But let's see if we can get everyone else there, too. Well, almost forgot step number one. Dying to set my IRB point right above where Gerb Snail is waiting in geosynchronous orbit. I really thought that would be a bit higher up, but I don't know. Who am I to question the genius Clovis Ray the first? You've already seen this, so let's go ahead and fast forward. It is important, of course, that you do not die. Go ahead to the stripy mountains of wonders. And then fly through the left side here. Right side has barriers. A little pit stop. And then back into the map. Up the side. And here's where it gets slightly different. Since we used Balance Box, Curb Snail is already waiting outside of the box in geosynchronous orbit, so I just have to hit the IRB again. If you use the Vesper launching method, you'll have to redo the beginning of the video to get someone out of box. Once again, we just come underneath here. Jump up to the top, and go on top. I would advise being a titan at this point. At least one of the two remaining people will have to be. The other can use the door breaching method again. I've been on arc this whole time, so my super will be charged by the time it's time to try to hit that precarious load again. Taking my time to make sure every jump is safe. And just taking the scenic route to see the chess pieces. Yay, chess pieces. One day we'll get confirmation on what they're about. Probably lighting though. And it is load time. And there we go. First IRB done again. Now we just need to do the second one. Normally I would fly out to the right, but 
the box that we want to get out of in security sector is over to the other side. So I'm going to follow Gerb Snail over there to a another hole to get outside of the station. The security sector box stops around where the ring starts to get kind of steep. So any of the antennas that stick out on this side should be safe for setting your IRB point on. I can see Salvo has selected this one down here. So I'm just going to die to set my IRB point nearby. That way it'll be nice and convenient. And now it's time to make the long flight again. Let me just speed this up a little bit. But I'll let you see the full route and enjoy the sights. You don't generally get to see those, uh, Solar panels rotating quite this fast. I do wonder how much of this we'll get to do next week. Especially given that uh, I imagine we'll have the exotic mission as part of this. So some amount of it will be repeatable, but... Some will probably just be the week three sort of mission. And I'm looking forward to seeing how that goes. And final descent done. All that stands between us and the secret location is one more pesky thunder crash. This one is a bit more high stakes. We can retry, but only because Gerb Snail is still out of box waiting to riz us if we need to again. When he comes this way, there will be no second chances. So you want to make sure you line yourself up well. And take your time here. If you mess up, as long as you don't die, you can try again. Oh. Luckily, I was able to scramble back here. Let's give that another go. Oh. Oh no. Ah, luckily the top of that door is solid. All right. Maybe on the next one. Ah, and there we go. Luckily I died to the load, but if you didn't, just remember that the box barrier extends all the way to the true floor, and dying to the true floor is much like dying to a load, so you just need to get to some place that you can safely drop all the way down. This next flight is long. We're going all the way to the true corner of the map. If you can slipstream, this would be a good place to do it. But sadly, I am a slow frog, so I'll be doing this with a regular sparrow flying. It is pretty impressive how far away this all is. You may think that we're coming right up to that kind of fog layer, but it's actually still quite a ways away. I'll slow it down when we're actually about to pass through it, though. I really wonder what this layer is. My thought was it was mostly here to block us from seeing the other area. And it very nearly worked, except that it seems to become kind of transparent from way below. We're still actually a decent bit away from that structure, so however large you think it is, it's probably much larger than that. 
This entire flight took me about 7 minutes 15 seconds. Definitely quite sizable. I really like how the Traveler looks from here. Kind of reminds me of Planet Zebes. Anyways, let's get a look inside. I am so hyped for whatever this ends up being. If you would like to experience it in-game for the first time, I would recommend stopping now. It is a very cool area to experience for the first time. I'm glad I got to visit it out of map first. It was quite the payoff for all the work we did to get here. Salvo managed to get in first and figure out a way to get inside of the map. It turns out there is a teleporter that will just drag you in. Very convenient. You just want to Drop on the outside of the tube going down, and you'll go right in. I believe this is the beginning. And we've got... Dog prints? I am very curious what the meaning behind this is. Kind of like a, almost like we're in like a simulation with the lighting. I wonder if this will be the Rasputin equivalent of the Vex domain. Or it could just be some physical place. Hard to know. But what I do know is that this place looks awesome. Kind of gives me whisper vibes in that you're not always sure where you need to go. Which is another reason that if you want to experience it all fresh, I would recommend not watching. There's that teleporter that we initially hit to get in the map. Yeah, and all of like the lighting effects and everything we've got going on here. I wonder what it'll be like when we're uh, having to fight our way through. We've got a turn over to the right. And I wonder if this will be where we get those other collectibles or if it'll be back on the station. There are four to get. Oh, four of the music box type things. This place is just so cool. And since we're in the mission from before, we still have sparrows, so... Don't really need them here, but... Oh man, that like very trippy looks like a walkway going up there. But yeah, if we wanted to, we could use a uh, use our sparrow. Oh man, I just like I am so hoping this section is repeatable. Well, at the very least, I'll be able to get here all season because my Titan is not finishing this mission. Well, that looks like a trap. Kind of hope all those pits will just teleport you back to the beginning, but... I think most of them are just kill barriers. I wonder if we'll have other puzzles that we have to do while going through this. 
Whoa. <laughs> That's a drop. There we go. And we've got... I think this is the end room. Kind of like a closed blast door going on. That seems to be non-entity, so... I don't know. But it looks like we've got our friend curved panel back here, so... Let's go ahead and see what's outside. <laughs> that drop. But yeah, that, uh... Seems like it's the end, unless we teleport somewhere else after this. At this point, I'm just flying around the outside to see if there's anything I've missed and to see if we can get back to the beginning again. And this drop is large. It's very purple. Finally at the top. And we can get out of the purple lighting if we go a little bit farther away. I wonder why that catwalk thing is in the middle of the sky. If we've got another load zone, I think at this point I'd be satisfied enough with what we've found so far. We should be getting close to where we came in. Salvo is currently standing over in that direction, and I think Gerb Snail is pretty close to arriving. Just gotta head over that way. Man, I can't wait to actually go through this thing proper. And yes, this is where we entered. Once the game's all here, we'll definitely have to get a selfie. I didn't actually realize until flying all the way around that where I initially landed was actually midway through the level and not at the beginning. A lot of thanks to Salvo and Gerbsnail for helping me come all the way out here, and to Corolla who helped test out the... Vesper Radius launch to get out as well. And I'll leave you with this thing. I am unsure why it does not smash. 